you develop a, a relationship with that particular piece of wood, and every piece of wood is different, and everything in a violin affects the violin, everything. I mean, literally, uh, uh, the shape, the, the fineness of the outline. I started, when I, uh, when I turned 50, um, I got the bug to play uh, the violin because uh, my son was playing it. He was taking lessons, I thought. And, uh, but then uh, as I kept playing it, I kept having problems with things. I said, well, this doesn't sound that great. Well, this should be better. You know, this E string isn't sounding that good. And, and I wanted to fix it because I'm a tinkerer, you know. And I like to take things apart and put them back together and find out what's going on. And so I got a cheap violin at a flea market. And uh, I took it apart and I, you know, read some stuff somewhere and I thinned out the top and, and you know, put all that together and it, it sounded good. I wanted to pick the violin, but I come from a fairly large family and not a lot of money and you had to rent a violin. And I said, that, that'll never fly. So I'll take the instrument that they'll give you, you know, the school has. And that was the baritone. And um, many, many years later, uh, my parents said, oh, we would have been happy to you know, rent you an instrument. Who knew? In terms of uh, building violins and playing violins, um, for me, they're connected. I've always been a musician ever since I can remember. I mean, there's always been music in my head that doesn't stop. <laughs> Then somewhere around seventh grade, the guitar, uh, my, sister, my cousin came to town and gave me a guitar and showed me three chords, and no one saw me again for like six hours, and uh, it just kind of took off from there. The scene in Boston where I, I uh, went to college and formed a, uh, we formed a band out of college so that basically so we could drop out of college. Um, uh, there was a number of opportunities for um, just jamming with friends. I was always looking for that. I was, you know, searching for that kind of connection and um, conversation um, while playing. And so I met um, Sterling and Maureen and um, Lou. Out of that came the, um, the Notorious VU. <laughs> I was just, you know, practicing guitar, trying to get better, uh, looking around for the next thing. And uh, John and Lou had a big argument, and um, John was leveraged out of the group, and they needed uh, somebody who could, um, you know, come in. And that was a Wednesday night, I think, and that Friday we were in Cleveland playing at Lacave. I didn't know all the material, you know, but. Um, I was a pretty fast study, so you know, Lou and I spent like a day going over stuff, and then for the next uh, few weeks, it was to polish it up. We were playing at Max's when he uh, left, and uh, in fact, we didn't. Nobody in the band knew. Sesnick knew ahead of time, but nobody in the band knew until the night he didn't, the first night of the week that he didn't show up. When, when Lou initially left, it was kind of exciting because I got to do two things I hadn't done a lot of before, and one was to sing um, lead and the other was to play the guitar. But with Lou not there, there was a, a strong center was gone and it was less focused. I had enough of a, a, a reputation that I couldn't go out and form a garage band and, and sort of come at it from that angle, but I didn't have enough cachet to go to um, a record company and say, uh, I'm, I've got a band, you know, and I'm willing to do an album. <laughs> I stopped playing music for many years. I stopped playing out. Um, I, and there was a time when I didn't even play, you know, I mean, my guitar sat in the case for many, many months. Bartender, uh, production assistant at a re record jacket printer, uh, a woodworker, uh, cabinet maker, furniture maker, and finally, um, I'm a violin maker. There's a song that will linger forever in our ears. Hard times come again. No more. And 
then there's a festival that happens on Port Townsend that I go to every year called Fiddle, uh, Festival of American Fiddle Tunes. Uh, I happened to play one night with Carrie, um, Carrie Lung, and, um, and then one night with Tom. Uh, and it was the first time I'd actually had like time with either one of them where it was just the two of us. Um, and um, I was just floored by both of them. The thing about Red Dog is that there's Nobody has an agenda other than to be with the other people and to make a musical connection and, uh, and play tunes um, together. Stuff happens that you, you don't know why it's happening or where it came from, but it's just uh, this constant negotiation um, between the three of us um, in terms of dynamics and, and um, uh, expression and everything that's going on. And it's all based around a very simple song. What I'd hope to get out of the Velvets and every band that I've ever been in um, is, a, is a, a sense of the, the connection. It's the thing that I set out to find in playing in bands um, a long, long time ago.